from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of the recipe of Haroset. Haroset, of course, that special mixture in which you dip the maror on Pesach. What is, what, is the, what is the source of this whole concept of Haroset, a special dip for Pesach? And what are the ingredients of this special food? I'd like to share with you several different ingredients. But first, the source. The Mishnah, the early part of the Talmud, where we say there that you, they brought him the matzah and the haroset. The, the people brought him the, 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 the chazeret, the maror. Of course, they brought the matzah, they brought the maror, and they brought the haroset. And they brought the two cooked items we put on the, on the cedar plate. haroset mitzvah. Yeah, they brought that haroset, even though haroset is not a mitzvah like matzah and maror. I have to understand. So then what do they bring it for if it's not a mitzvah? The Gemara will explain. Rabbi Lazar ben Tzadok, Rabbi Lazar ben Tzadok, he says, no. Mitzvah, it is a mitzvah. The Haroset, sure the Haroset's a mitzvah. So we need to understand what's the first opinion, that you bring it even though it's not a mitzvah. So the Gemara says, if it's not a mitzvah, what do you bring it for? Rav Ami says, Mishum Kappa. We do it because there could be some sort of a poison. We know that horseradish can be very very strong. It's not so good for you. You have a little haroset that goes with it, takes the, uh, takes the worms out or it takes the poison out, some sort of antidote to the very bitter moral. And then Rebbe Lazar says, Tzad ben Tzadok says it is a mitzvah. So how does the Gemara explain what kind of mitzvah is haroset? It doesn't say, thou shalt eat haroset in the Torah. What is this? So Rebbe Levi says, it's reminders of the apples. What, was the, what happened in the apples? So Rashi explains, the Medrash explains that the, the Jewish women used to give birth under the apple tree in the field. Number one, nobody could hear them. Number two, it was a happier place. Number three, would, the men would be out in the fields. They would see their women are giving birth. Thank God everything's okay, and they could have more children. This was the tapuach, the apple. Whether an apple really translates as apple, or maybe it's some sort of citrus fruit, as Rabbi Salvechik suggested, Interesting question. We take it in Ashkenazi community as an apple. And also, it could be Abay Amar, Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Zechelatit. Rabbi Yochanan said, no, it's not to remember the apple, it's to remember the, the mortar, the, the mortar and the brick that they used to have to make, the mud, they had to make the mud bricks. That's why we have Haroset in that form. Therefore, we make it a little bit sharp. Remember the acidic uh, apple or uh, the uh, the, uh, some sort of citric uh, sort of taste, and also smuchet should be very thick, zecher latit. Now, the Tosfot points out, the Yushalmi says that some people make it in remem- remembrance of the dam, the blood. So that leads to our third ingredient, apples. The thickness we make today with Ashkenazim usually make it with nuts, and the dam, the, the wine, reminds us of the blood. What blood? There are two theories. Either the blood of the children, that the Egyptians used to take our children and put them into their babies and put them into the bricks and they are the blood of those children or the famous plague of the blood it reminds us of that and the uh, the, the, the toast was also mentioned that the Chuba Sagaonim about a thousand years ago they said that you should make it with fruit which Israel is compared to in the Song of Songs which is a Pesach song we talk about Israel compared to fruits under the under the Apple tree, I stirred you up. Uh, your 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 uh, temples are like the uh, peel of a pomegranate. Uh, the it talks about the blossoming of the fig. So uh, it talks about climbing the date tree, uh, going down into the, uh, the the uh, the the garden of the of the nuts. So uh, God is is looking after us uh, real soon. It reminds us of Sh- Shekedim, where where God is coming real soon. Uh, God is guarding over the, the end of days. So, uh, so all kinds of other fruits are mentioned. So now we get into other possible ingredients. We extract from this Gaonic passage nuts. That nuts, egoz, ginat egoz, it's one of the fruits of the Song of Songs. So it reminds us of the love of God and Jewish people. We put nuts in our harosa. The Sephardic Jews say, well, why just nuts? You could put some, put other things in there. And here we turn to the Rambam. The Rambam has a different uh, different ingredients, recipes, not chopped nuts, chopped apples, and wine, but rather 
something else. The Rambam, Rambam in, the, in his commentary to the Mishnah, says that according to Rebbe Lazar Rebbe if it's a mitzvah, you should say the blessing over eating a mitzvah food, like when you eat matzah. And we don't hold that way. We're not going to make a bracha over the over the, uh, the haroset, and it's not a mitzvah to eat haroset. But the Rambam in, the, in his laws says, Achilas um, uh, haroset mitzvah midir yisofri. Sure, it's a mitzvah, a rabbinic mitzvah, but it's a mitzvah. So, really? And he says, how do you make it? And the Rabbi Salvatic says, uh, the Rambam becomes a chef. He says, well, you take, take dates, or you could, take, you could take figs, and you could put raisins in there, and you, other things like it, you chop them up, you put a little vinegar in there, and then you spice, put a few spices in there, uh, and that's another ingredient we often put in to remember the straw, put in the the, cost, the, 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 the sticks of, of uh, cinnamon, Kamotit uh, Beteven, just like they had bricks with straw, we have spices with our uh, the very chopped up substance. He says, you know what the mitzvah is? The mitzvah is to bring it on the table. Yes, we dip in it, but the main thing is not to eat it. You see, he disagrees with the interpretation that you're supposed to eat charoset as a mitzvah. He agrees with the idea of Rabbi Lazarus Tzadok that you bring it on the table as a mitzvah, a mitzvah of bringing bringing to the table. It's a mitzvah of a, it's a, it's a visual aid at the Seder. You see that? That's the tit, that's the, uh, that, that's the, uh, meaning the, the, those, the bricks. Uh, this reminds us of the blood. This reminds us of the relationship with God in the shir That's the, that's the recipe. It works very well. You take dates, you crush them, put them in a frying pan, fry them up with some vinegar, put a little raisins in there, uh, and a little cinnamon, and you will be amazed. It is the most delicious thing Make sure that your raisins and your dates have a proper hashgacha. The raisins, the dole, and zomanti are good for Pesach. Finally, what, what does it all mean? So I saw in one of the Sifrei Musar, he says, <laughs> in the ethical books, that it shows that the Jews withstood the test. You see, you have the maror, shows how bitter life was for us. The Haro said, with the maror, says, despite the bitterness, we withstood the test. We were able to, to have some sweetness within that bitterness. The Chazonish says, I disagree. I don't understand. What's the sweetness? The Jews were in the mud. The Jews in, in, in Egypt fell into the mud. We were in the 49th level of impurity. We worshipped idols. We were just like everyone else. So the, we didn't have a bris milah. We didn't even circumcise ourselves. So the, the two views as to whether we withstood the test and whether the haroset symbolizes it withstanding the test, the sweetness within the bitterness, or whether it symbolizes the failure of the Jewish people uh, in the desert. But finally, there's another notion others mention that uh, the haroset with the maror is that ultimate symbol which we have throughout the Seder of the slavery and the freedom. All in one ingredient. There's both slavery, that's the, the, the mud, the bricks, and the freedom, the idea of the apple, the loving relationship of God and the Jewish people. There may be bitterness, but the Jewish people bring sweetness to it. We were able to overcome. There may be bitterness, but we remember that there's a love of God for the Jewish people. And with that, it makes all the difference. Thank you for joining us here at the Anshay Sfar Bethel Emeth Congregation here in Memphis, Tennessee. And thank you to Jason Lefkowitz for making today, today's presentation possible. We wish everyone, everyone a Chad Kosher Vesameach. I remember, especially at this time of Pesach, my father loved to share so many different Devei Torah. I remember my father, Baruch Baruch Haim Shmuel, Zichor Nola Bracha, and Harini Mishka Parat Mishkavo. May his memory be a blessing. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein.